G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in over on the west side of the map, playing as the Chinese, it is Marine Lord. His opponent who spawns on the east side of the map, playing as the Rus, it's Lucifron 7. This game is part of a seven game series between these two players in EGC TV's Golden League. Golden League. The Goldenest League. <laughs> I was trying to think of like a, an advertisement. You know how they're like, Bud Light, the lightest beer you can get this side of the Mississippi. Or like some, some sort of thing like that. I'm like, Golden League, the goldest league you can find this side of the Mississippi. <laughs> I don't know why it's this side of the Mississippi, but uh, it, it, is, it is a Golden League. 15 GMT, Saturday and Sunday every single month every single weekend throughout may uh so make sure you check it out if you haven't already but let's talk a little bit about this game a little bit about what we expect to happen today because we have got a matchup that i'm familiar with and i'll be honest with you it normally scares me mainly because it's like whenever you play on what what was that did you see how fast that 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 scout was moving i thought i sped the replay up or something because i'm like three or four seconds behind and i thought i like bugged out the replay nope it was just a weird looking scout we changed perspective right there so the wolf wouldn't wouldn't trigger me. Uh, but yeah, let, let's talk a little bit about this matchup. So normally when you're playing this matchup, it is a matchup that you are going to be playing on high view. Uh, that's if you're playing on the, on the ladder. Look at all, all of these uh, these wolves getting picked up here. Lucifer doing a, a pretty poor job of, of getting the wolves. Rather, Marine Lord just doing a, a better job. You can see that, that one getting close to being picked off and Marine Lord seals the, the fate for that one. Uh, so this could be a difficult matchup on Highview. It is a not as difficult matchup on this map. Uh, and the reason why is because on Highview, there are so many stealth forests that the Rus player can often hide what they're doing. Now, no other Civ can really do this as well as the Rus. And the reason why is because of their Golden Gate. So their Golden Gate, they put it down. They don't have to touch the stone. But guess what? They've got a second town center somewhere that they didn't tell you about because you never found it because well guess what there's so many stealth forests there but guess what on this map king of the hill you can see everything and that's really what sets this map apart so i think that lucifer on here he's gonna have to play it a little bit different to how you would play it on high view and i'm looking forward to seeing what he's got up, up his sleeve whether we are going to see a potential fast castle uh with the classic viper-esque world record attempt coming through for lucifer that could be an option uh whether he looks to play it a little bit more in feudal that could be an option as well i think going for a bit of a fast castle against china can work uh but it's one of those things where it's it's like you know what china's game plan is right like china wants to two town center fast castle that that's essentially how china wants to play um and if and, and when, when they do that they're basically happy to commit to being on a timer where they, they will then go for bombards and then look to try and take the sacred site in the center uh, or, or look to rather uh, to to neutralize the sacred site in the center, um, and I think the Rus player knows that. And I think the, the difficult thing is that the Rus player probably doesn't have enough time uh, to actually do that. Um, so I'm curious to see exactly how he's going to play it because Lucifer, this is his home map, and so he's definitely got a plan picked out. Um, and you would have expected China to be in the cards here for Marine Lord. So we'll check in with Marine Lord. We'll see how he's doing because he's going to start gathering up wood on the backside here, very far away uh, from his uh, from his town center. But remember that Imperial Academy when it comes down smack bang right here and it is in between both of these two and it's feeling really good it is a really really nice uh imperial academy spot there the other alternative was this wood line up towards the front um and you can try and put the imperial academy here but you can see it's a very small wood line you're talking 18 trees versus 60 trees 136 trees 217 trees there's a lot there's a lot of trees barbican gonna be coming down though or is this a wall no i think this is barbican here right he's not gonna barbican the center he'll just barbican right here is that what he's doing? Is that what he's doing? Marine Lord, is that what you're doing? What are you doing? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I like it. I like it. This is this is a, this is good Barbican placement. Uh, it's pretty far away from the town center. And obviously the more scouts that come out over towards this uh, position, and it's highly likely that he's going to need to bring more villagers out here. Just because I feel like three villagers is probably not enough. Scout actually going to head back. Wait, is he, he's not contesting it? Oh, he's not contesting it. He's not going to contest it. Okay, interesting. Uh, so he, he just sort of gives it away over to his opponent. Uh, but we do see that a villager is coming out. And I wonder what this... Oh. Ah. It's not, it's not that. It's not as good as you think. I mean, it's good because it denies uh, unit flow throughout here. But that's it. Uh, no, nothing else, really. 
because all, all that's going to happen is is Marine Lord just makes a mill over on these on on these right here, and then he just drops a town center right there. Beautiful timing there for Marine Lord already. We can see he's just going to cancel that wall, prevent it from even going down. And now that villager is going to be wasted. You can see he's, he's kind of protecting protecting it uh, with the scout, so doing a good job in that regard. And now going to be able to get that up. And you can see he's trying to weasel his way through a bit of a wall here. Going to be rushing down a barracks. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. We got ourselves a little bit of an early game fiesta coming out here. Villager still managing uh, to to keep itself alive, and you can see he's going to try and weasel a wall through here but I think he's given up on the causes the barracks has come out Marine Lord is going to be able to defend against this he's supervising up that barracks as well looking to get the upgrade as well damn there is a lot of stuff going on right now for these guys four villagers still on gold over here that is a lot Obviously, hasn't had the time to to get the mill uh, to get the mill taxes in just yet. It has been nonstop. But now up towards the north, take a look at this. Oh my God, what a beautiful spot this is for a boar. He's going to lure it up up to the top corner. All eight villagers come up over here. They're going to kill it right next to it, and then they're going to make a hunting cabin against the edge. He's got to be careful not to lose a villager. That one's going to be kept back. Second one's going to be coming out. A little bit of a raid back there. One scout going down. He's going to be careful. That villager came down down to about what was that? Jeez, five health. That's a lot of that's a lot of damage, twenty health on that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, M Marine Lord at this point in time, uh, he's going to be struggling because he's going up against a very heavy scout opening, uh, which is always difficult to deal with. You can see that he's got spearmen uh, to try and uh, fend these off, uh, but still he's going to be struggling. And now we can actually see that the spearman is moving out across the map. He's looking to try and cause some sort of havoc. Wheelbarrows come through for Marine Lord as well. Quite an early wheelbarrow, 623. Still no dynasty for Marine Lord at this point in time. Still no second town center. So I can't help but feel that Marine Lord is behind where he wants to be. Ideally right now, at this point, 6 minutes 30 into the game, second town center and dynasty should be up for him. Uh, and it's not. So it, it's... It, it is one of those things that really starts to hurt, and, and he's quite behind. And obviously, that, that has been because primarily of the, the barracks that gets forced out because of this, uh, the, the early scouts harassing down here. There are a lot of contributing factors. Uh, but it's going to get worse for Marine Lord before it gets better because we do now see a stable is out up towards the north side. Now, he could move his spearmen up here and look to try and cause some havoc and try and intercept, but ideally, he just wants to defend against these inevitable raids that are going to be coming in. And he could even look to wall off this side, maybe even wall out the gold mine. He doesn't need it. He can always go get it later. That's always going to be an option for him. We'll check in over with his opponent, though, and see how Lucifront is doing. Uh, Double Broadaxe is going to be the name of the game for him. I'm, I'm assuming that we've got our wheelbarrow in for Lucifront. Indeed, we do. Uh, so he is probably looking at doing a bit more of a Guz build. So I wouldn't be surprised if Archery Rangers are coming down. And indeed, they are already coming down. Uh, and so now, going to be looking to keep keep track. He needs, he needs to be careful here. He's got this uh, these spearmen making their way up. So how does Marine Lord look to play this? Because obviously, you know, we talked about it before. Two towns out of Song Dynasty is the way that you want to play. Up against the Guz build, it's a little bit different. Um, I, th I think in this scenario, he has been able to deny... Look at the <laughs> look at this stupid spearman, dude. What are you what are you even doing here, spearman? Like, just, just go back to base and be part of the spearman army. Like, you're just being annoying at this point. But now coming up, no wooden fortress right now for Lucifron. It's gonna it may cost him dearly as archers are finally gonna be coming out. A couple of knights here. It's definitely gonna cause some idle time. Spearman actually going to be coming in on top of the archers. We can see double archers, triple archers. I think he should be fine to hold this on. No horsemen up towards this northern position. Uh, but there is definitely a bit of havoc that is being caused. A villager does go down back in the gold mine as well. There is absolute... There, there is absolute mayhem all over this map. Marine Lord not looking the best right now. He's definitely looking like he's on shaky ground. And he's, he's thrown out the China pick as well quite early. Which is a civilization that... I don't know. It kind of feels like a pretty decent sieve. Maybe you want to hold on to it. Uh, <laughs> but in all seriousness, though, uh, it's it's great to see him picking up the Chinese here in the second game, uh, despite that victory in the first game. And what an absolute game that was on the first one. Outpost going to be coming up now for Marine Lord. He'll be looking to defend this position. We'll check in over with his opponent, who is going to be going heavily, heavily into uh, more military units. It is going to be a very thick, a very fast uh, age to uh, play from Lucifron here as more villagers get picked up. And we can see the forces coming in. A lot of those villas are low health. He garrisons them all inside. He's going to be able to defend. And you can see those knights are very low health. Uh, but both of them managed to get away. We'll continue focusing on Marine Lord. He's got the third Imperial official out. And Chokunu going to be coming out for him here. And I do like this play. I think Chokunu are going to work ma magic in this matchup. I think they're very, very effective uh, against the Rus player. Just because the Rus player, you can almost be certain that they want to go into an archer ball. And Chokunu, incredibly effective against archers just because of the way that they trade. As you can see here, they're doing 12 damage versus the 5 damage of these archers. So it's a big difference between the two. But the food source for Marine Lord, it is secured. It is well and truly secured. If he wants to move out towards this position, I suspect it's not going to be the case in 
going for a stable. Very interesting. So going for a 1-1-1 build order here. This is very curious. Normally, I would have expected him just to go into a very heavy Chokunu play. Uh, but not going to be the case here. And cancelling up a couple of them that were in the queue. Blacksmith going to be coming down. Looking to get that plus one upgrade. In hand cannon slits coming through. Uh, we'll check in over with Lucifron and see how he's doing. As he's looking to try and put down, I would suspect, a wooden fortress on this front line. Try and get a bit of vision into the base of Marine Lord. See exactly what he's up against. Oh, he's going to chop through. Oh, he's going to chop through. You naughty little... You naughty little Lucifron chopping through. I don't know if... Uh, I, okay, Marine Lord does see this. But he's not applying any pressure up here. Now he sees it. Now he sees it. And he's like, oh shit. Oh shit. He can he can deny the villa. Oh my god, that damage. If he had one more in there, he would have got it. You can see the, the delicate balance right here. Trying to get through that villager. He's just going to leave it back there idle for maybe 15, 20 seconds. And then bring it back in. Okay, he's just going to go for it now. He's going to go for the chop, leave the archers right on top. It's hard for him to click on it. He knows that they're in there. But he, he knows that he's not going to be able to defend this position for much longer. And Lucifron, he's looking very good, very healthy at this point. Wooden Fortress now coming down for him. Going to be able to chop through, stop this gold mine from being gathered. Keep in mind those hand cannon slits exist up there. He, he could be able to just to come back up here and, and drop the... Uh, the um the, the mining camp up here and then mine from this gold it wouldn't be a bad idea uh, there's a lot of range on that but now you can see he's beginning to exhaust these food sources that are in the base so he'll be looking to extend out down towards his south side and more and more units coming in now for lucifer and i suspect we got plus one ranged armor we do have plus one ranged armor uh plus one range attack probably going to be coming through after that uh for marine lord and uh, he's got plenty of gold in the bank so yeah we can see that it is plus one ranged attack coming through uh for him as well so everything that Marine Lord is doing at this point is looking right. Uh, my main concern is that there's not enough there's not enough Chokunu coming out. Uh, because Chokunu, very, very strong in this matchup especially. Uh, up against the Knights, you might think that they don't do that well. Well, consider the fact that they've only got three armor. Uh, and the Chokunu is going to have five attack. As long as that plus one armor isn't in. Once that plus one armor comes in, it's a different ball game. We'll check over with Lucifer and see how he's doing. Whether he's got that upgrade through just yet, he doesn't. He doesn't have Iron Undermesh just yet. And that can be dangerous for him because Marine Lord can push through and do a lot of damage with 31 archers now coming out for Lucifron. I feel like this just isn't enough horsemen here to really seal that deal. They've obviously got plus one ranged defense, uh, but the question is whether that's going to be enough. And now we'll enter into the cinematic mode as these guys begin to posture over this last position here in this game. They're going to be trying to trying to fight over this, try and hold on. You can see Marine Lord now pushing forward, moving forward with a lot of horsemen. Going to be able to get in on the backside there. He ideally wants to be connecting with those archers, the Chokunu on the backside, doing a great job of just cleaning up. You can see how much damage they're doing, but now going to get picked off themselves. They've got to be careful. They've only got 4.5 range, and indeed Marine Lord has to back out. He doesn't have enough of a force here uh, to hold on, and ideally he wants to be investing more and more into those Chokunu. You can see he's not actually supervising anything at the moment. In fact, I think he's supervising... Is he supervising the mill? I think it's the mill. He's not supervising any production building at this point. What's the production difference between these two? Let's take a look. Up towards the north, we've got Lucifer with one stable and four, uh, three archery rangers. And compare that to Marine Lord, who's just sitting on 111. So not a huge difference between these two guys at this point. Plenty of food down towards the south. This play was really... If, if Marine Lord wins the game, it was sim simply because of this play. Securing his food. That is exactly, you know, what you got to do to win this game. It, it can be very, very difficult for you. But now pushing around the edge of the map. You can see the town center just firing off, doing what it does does best. Now, keep in mind, behind or, on this entire time, Marine Lord is on Song Dynasty. So he's on 47 villages right now. Lucifer is on 43. So he's got he's got a villager gain, a villager in increase that's happening through here. Lance is moving out, running a bit of a screen. Going to be able to take out the first horseman. Chokunu continuing to come up the rear with the gear. Still yet to get that plus two uh, or plus one ranged armor in. Now going to have to fall back once again. This mass is really looking quite weaselly for him. He's got to be very careful. Ideally, you'd love to see a bigger mass. I can't say it enough. I feel like I'm just re I'm repeating myself at this point. Just make more Choku Lucifron, or rather uh, Marine Lord. Yeah, th that's the guy, man. But uh, now we'll take a look over on the other side. We'll see what Lucifron is up to. He's just going to be gathering from his deer. Obviously, he has exhausted that boar up towards the north. There is a second boar down towards the south. It's going to require a bit of APM if he wants to actually take it out. Uh, he's sitting on 355 bounty at the moment. So not a bad amount of bounty, but obviously not the best. Um, he's still going to have access to a potential um, great... Uh, or a high trade house back here. Chokunu moving forward. Look at the damage that comes out against them. And we do have an age three coming through, but it's not going to be the high trade house that he goes for. Instead, it is going to be a... There it is. The Abbey of the Trinity is going to be what he goes for here. So probably going to be looking to secure up the center. That's going to be his first bet. Let's capture the center. Take the, take the relic and then go back to base. That's going to be your first trip. Horseman moving around the edge of the map. Marine Lord going to be finding some villagers out on these berry patches. 
Indeed, he does spot them. And also, we see Lucifron actually spotting them himself. Uh, so knows that, uh, that that raid was indeed coming. And now looking to try and do some damage. But unfortunately, his villagers, they do run very quickly. I don't know. They've got the wheelbarrow, right? Yeah, they got their wheelbarrow. Nice little push coming through here. Lucifron definitely going to be trying to dish out some damage. He reaches Castle Age, and with this, Marine Lord definitely going to be in a bit of a tough spot because now the question is for Marine Lord, you know, wh where does he go from here? The answer is obviously Castle Age. Uh, but, you know, is he going to be able to hold on against this, this composition that his enemies got? The, the sufficient or the significant uh, military mass is, is definitely starting to play a big part in, in the story of this game here because Marine Lord is stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, the rock being the, this wall that he's put up for himself and the hard place being his enemy that continues to push in from the front. Villagers, for whatever reason, sieging down this wall. This is a misclick and a half if I've ever seen one. There are, is no reason why these villagers should be sieging down this wall segment right here. This is 100% a mistake. I think he may have misclicked on a... Is there a deer underneath there? Or did they go idle? Maybe they went idle. I'm not sure exactly why this is, but this is a massive mistake. He, he essentially has 11 idle villagers. Chokunu moving forward. You can see how much damage they're able to do. Pushing forward. Actually get, getting a nice little cleanup right here. At the same time, a bit of a raid back towards the wood line. He's got plenty of lumber camps in there. You gotta love what he's doing back there. Now continuing to push forward. Arrow slits not yet in. But hold on, I think Springhold's through. Yeah, the Springhold is through now for, uh, for Lucifer. And Marine Lord definitely gonna be in a tough spot here. He continues pushing forward, and all of these units are probably going to be going down just because they're stuck between uh, stuck between a, a wooden fortress and a hard place, being the knights and the lances that they've got. And now they've got their... This is where it starts to get hard, because these guys are upgraded, uh, so they get that, that extra armor. And now Marine Lord going to be chased away. Landmark going up. Still hasn't realized. Still hasn't realized his villagers down here. I think he just realized then. Why, why did he, he... He... It was almost like he took it down with intent. What was that? Why? I need to know. I need to know. Somebody reach out to Marine Lord. Tweet him. Message him on Instagram. Get his Snapchat. Be like, Marine Lord, why did you siege down the wall segment with 11 villagers on King of the Hill? What were you doing, Marine Lord? <laughs> why? I, st I, I genuinely don't know. I'm clueless. Marine Lord now aging up. Age 3 coming through for him. Do we see the nest of bees coming out? You would expect it's probably going to be the case with a force this big. Probably looks to go into palace guards as well as um, spearmen and then a whole bunch of nest of bees. But obviously, sacred victory is going to be on the cards as well. So it might mean you have to think about a trebuchet potentially. We see that big, beautiful message in the screen. If, if, in, just in case you missed it, they, they display it for you in uh, in extra big writing. Uh, <laughs> why, why is it so big? Get off my screen, dude. Oh my god. Uh, maybe if you're playing the game, sure, but like if you're casting the game, get off my screen, man. It's so big. You're so obnoxious. Neutralize the sacred site. Like, okay. All right. Sure. I'll 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 tell I'll tell I'll tell Marine Lord to do it. But now Marine Lord looking to get those upgrades. Chokunu going to be coming through as well as veteran Spearman. Also going ba balanced, ah, balanced projectiles. Now, one of the things to note here is that the dynamic between plus two ranged armor, which is exactly what Red Riv Wedge Rivets is going to be giving him, uh, is going to mean that these lances or these knights take almost no damage from the Chokunu. And so I always posit that it's it can, because of how long Castle Ages typically go, in my opinion, I don't think Chokunu is really that worth it in Castle Age. In, in Imperial, they're definitely worth it. In Feudal Extended Fights, they're definitely worth it. But in Castle, I feel like they definitely they fall off a bit. Just because in Imperial, they get the Incendiary Arrows. That's what sets them apart. That's what makes them different. Um, but uh, but now those Knights are going to be coming through. They've got their plus two. And you can see that the, the they've got they've technically got as much uh, armor as the Chokunu have got damage. They're going to be able to trade out pretty effectively with the veteran archers, though. He's going to need some spears in here. The spearmen going to get so easily picked off. The big mass, the huge mass, rather, of archers. But now, hold on a minute. Nest of Bees is out, and we got some damage coming down on the dance floor. So a lot of those archers do go down. Nest of Bees doing what it does best and holding on for dear life. At the same time, that battering ram still looking to try and take down that main town center. Gold going to become a bit of an issue here now for Marine Lord because all of a sudden it's starting to you're starting to work out like hold on, Marine Lord's got lots of wood in the bank, but where's all the gold? Where's all the gold? He's got plenty of gold up here, but he just can't access it. He can't get over there. He needs whether he needs like outposts or keeps or something. He needs he just needs something. But now we see all of the units going to be working to focus down this battering ram. Behind this Lucifer front is taking all of the relics. And keep in mind, this whole time Marine Lord has been on one town center. 
Marine Lord has been stuck on one town center. And that's going to mean that the, the likelihood here for Lucifron to win is significantly improved because the second town center for Marine Lord was never made. He's been stuck here. And so we take a look at the village account now. Marine Lord sits on, or rather, uh, Lucifron sits on 58, Marine Lord on 73. So only a difference of 15. With the second town center, you would expect at this point in the game, Marine Lord to be sitting on something closer to about 98, 99, something around that mark. But obviously losing out a lot of villages here as well uh, throughout the game. There have been non-stop raids coming through. We'll take a look at the upgrades and see what he's got. Uh, doesn't have Imperial Examinations. Doesn't have Specialized Pick. No Horticulture. No, uh, does have Wheelbarrow. Uh, you can see the Granaries are going to be starting to go down here as well. Double Broad Axe, not yet picked up either. So no economic upgrades yet for Marine Lord, with the exception of that Wheelbarrow, which, to be honest, it's more of a defensive upgrade just so you can run away a little bit faster. But uh, I'll give it to him. We'll check over with Lucifer and see what his upgrades are looking like. Because behind this, everything is going well for him. He's looking very good. Double Broad Axe is through. Wheelbarrow is through. No Horticulture. I'm I'm assuming no specialized pick either because it's very rare that uh that the rus actually mine their resources uh very very rare a lot of a lot of villages okay i'm not sure these guys just dropped off resources let's check the tickets tickets he's doing a great job spending it keep enough for a keep in the middle uh so that'll be coming down Ooh, never mind enough for a second keep in the middle uh <laughs> that is that is already one big keep and now keep in mind I, I i actually didn't take note of the sacred site timer uh but i would suspect at this point is there's probably about oh, i'm gonna say like seven minutes left at this point that's what i'm going with that's my gut feeling i'm sticking with it seven minutes i'm gonna call it like 27 minutes is like our our rough guideline here uh so th that's where i'm, I'm gonna suspect it is marine lord behind this though this and this is the problem i don't think he's got the economy to deal with this he, he, he doesn't have the economy to, to push out here successfully because he's gonna need a trebuchet and when the trebuchet comes out it's gonna be dealing with the sprinkles because the sprinkles are gonna be firing downhill and keep in mind these, these are some spicy sprinkles as well that you're dealing with these are rust sprinkles so he's probably gonna be looking to get his upgrades as well where are they he'll probably be looking to get greased axles uh as an upgrade and that's going to enable him to duck in, duck out, you know, do all that kind of fancy thing that you would expect to see out of a uh, a, a top top level player. We hear the trebuchet. There it is. It's a, it's a, did it miss? I think it might have missed, but I don't think it did. 550 damage? Yeah. It, it looked like it missed. It looked like the boulder landed there. There we go. Uh, now that, that wooden fortress is going to be down. Two more hits and it, it will be down. But you can see that uh, Lucifron's definitely making himself at home up here on the top of the pops. 15 villagers in queue at the moment. Uh, so he's continuing working towards uh, that uh, that 150 villager max that you you know that they love to hit. Villagers just over here perpetually repairing against the four horsemen. Just being a constant drain. You know, I'll, I'll take four of your horsemen population and you can have two of my villagers and some wood trickling. I'll, I'll accept it. That's a fair trade. Spring of Mass, really starting to look good for Lucifron here. He's a, and so th this is part of the reason why it's so difficult taking the heal away from anybody on King of the Hill. So let's take a look at, at Marine Lord. Marine Lord is investing in trebuchets, which are going to be taking out the base defense of his opponent. These things cost population. And the the base defense that his opponent has got doesn't cost population. Uh, so Lucifron's able to be a lot more mobile, a lot more agile here as well because of the Springwoods. And now Marine Lord's going to need to get some sort of Springwood out himself because Lucifron, he's just going to be able to pick off these units from on top of the hill, baiting them forward. Look at that. He's just being very annoying. Just sitting up here all day. He can, he can chill up here all day uh, with these units. Still yet to actually wall that in. Now coming through, a couple of spearmen up on that north side as well. So maybe looking to draw his attention away from that that northern or that, that, uh, that central side and maybe try and bring his attention out. This is something that Beastie Cutie does a lot. He, he, just as he's about to engage his enemy, he will attack them in like two or three different places, and then he will engage and try and get a favorable engage at the beginning. Uh, so that could be one of the things that we see. But now all the knights coming down the hill, a lot of units right now for Lucifron. And unfortunately, it looks like Marine Lord, he's just going to be absolutely without spears. And so he's going to have to turn around. And now those trebuchets are going to get forced back. Lucifron on 138 population, Marine Lord on 164. But remember, Marine Lord, or Lucifron rather, is putting a fair amount of his resources into these static defenses, these keeps. Uh, we are seeing that he's got boiling oil that is, it is ready, it is operable, uh, and he is, he is op operable? Maybe operational. Let's say that. Uh, operable sounds like it, it's ready to go into operation. Like, 
he's, he's in the OR. Like that, <laughs> like that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, Spring Lord's continuing to do what they do best. And this, this is where it gets tough, right, for Marine Lord, because Marine Lord's now going to try and match his opponent. We got three minutes to go. Look at that timing. I said 27 minutes. I called it 100%, baby. That was that was good timing, Drongo. Damn. It's, it's kind of like, you know, when you wake up like five seconds or, or like a minute before your alarm and you've slept for seven hours and you're like, how did I wake up like one minute before my alarm? Spring Lord, Spring Lord, Spring Lord, Spring Lord. Rest in peace, little Spring Lord. <laughs> oh, it's not going well right now for Marine Lord. This is a really tough spot. Honestly, Lucifer's played this very well, but by the same token, I feel like Marine Lord, he just, he just unfortunately didn't ever get that second town center up. And it would have been hard for him to hold had he had he gone for a second town center. It didn't look like he was ever in a position to go for it. But without taking that second town, town center, he never has a win condition. And that's the thing. Like right now is when that second town center would be coming through. Because he could be he could be Imperial. He could be with Bombards. He could be with Pyrotechnics, all that good stuff. 24 minutes. You know, that's pretty deep into the game. Um, but it's obviously not the case here. He's got he's sticking with trebuchets. Four trebs are going to be the way that he plays it. And you can see just this kiting. I remember watching that De Muslim game against Serral on uh, Hillendale, where he played the uh, as the as the Rus, and he had the Springwood sitting behind the uh, the palisade walls, the fortified palisade walls, and he kept building them. And he would move up and build more, build up, move more. It was just it was disgusting. I loved it. Springwood's doing a great job here, just constantly picking off units. We can see them on the ground here. Uh, but the first keep does finally go down, and that's going to enable Marine Lord to push up and look to do some damage. The Chokunu going to be coming out. They've got their plus two range armor, plus two range attack. Uh, crossbowmen on the other side here, as well as a couple of veteran archers are going to be trying their best to find a way around. But unfortunately, the numbers here not looking that healthy for Marine Lord. And Marine Lord's got nest of bees down the hill, but there's not really a lot he can do under it. Finally, it looks like that that uh, opening is going to come down. Marine Lord going to be looking to drop a keep on this forwards, this front line as well. Not a lot of villagers here, though. He's got to be careful. He needs to pull more villagers. You can see the Spring Lord's actually taking out the villagers. There we go. That's the kind of pull that we need. Marine Lord, all of a sudden, he, he's worked it out. He knows what's up. But he's got to be careful here. The infantry mass is really starting to dwindle for him. Nesta B is going to be firing off, but now at the back line, look at the Springles as they move forward. They're like, hey, you get back from here, heathen. And now that second... We got, oh my god, it's one minute to, to... Oh lord, I thought that was the two minute timer. That's one minute to go. Oh, Marine Lord, I don't like your chances of this one, buddy. That is a lot of units. That is a lot of keeps. And that is a lot of problems that you've got. I don't think there's any way that Marine Lord's able to take this hill from his opponent. And I think that it was just incredible job by Lewis front in the early game. Keeping the pressure on, forcing Marine Lord, making sure he never got that second town center. And still here we sit at the 26th minute and there is no town center for Marine Lord. He's pulling villages. He's pulling absolutely everything. He's only got the one town center. And as a result, it means that he is far behind in that village account. 93 villages for him, 69 for his opponent. But still, it's nowhere near enough. It is nowhere near enough. And now all those Springlords going to be trying their best. You can see the 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 uh, the Trebs on the back line. He's got six Trebuchets. He's going to be looking to try and pick this off, but now keeping the, the focus down. But you can see that timer. It's going to be coming out any second. I can feel it. And good game gets called. I don't know whether that was a victory. I don't know whether if that was a tap out, but I'm pretty confident right there uh, that Marine Lord just tapped out. He said, I can't do it. I mean, he, he was coming in for the kill. You know what? I think that just might have been the timer. No, defeat, annihilation. Marine Lord, Marine Lord eliminated himself. He, he conceded. Um, good game. Well played, fellas. Make sure you check out game number three in this series. Uh, I suspect this is going to be a long series because that was game number two. We saw Lucifron uh, clap back against Marine Lord. I hope you enjoyed this caster game and I will catch you guys in the next one.